What's up guys, welcome back to another Revit video. In this video we'll be covering the match line tool. So what is the match line tool? It's over here in the view tab. There's match line. So match line. It's going to better organize your split views. And so split views, let's say you have a long floor plan like I do here, and you want to make a match line to split up one side versus the other. Now the match line itself won't split it, the view or anything like that. But if you watched my last couple of videos with scope boxes and duplicating views as dependent, you can see how I split up a view to prepare us for this video. So I'm going to go back and do all of those things in one video and you're going to see how scope boxes work. I'm not going to go fully in depth with scope boxes. I'd recommend you go watch in that video as well as duplicating views as dependent. I'm not going to cover everything with that, so watch that video as well. But what I'm going to do is use all of those things along with the match line tool to finally organize this long floor plan onto sheets and get it to fit, whereas right now it doesn't fit on a sheet. So what do we need to do first? Well, we can do scope boxes or we can duplicate the view, whatever we want to do first. So let's do scope boxes. So I'm gonna do a scope box, and because I'm gonna to have to split this into two different sections, I'm gonna call this scope box area A. I'll leave the height at 40 feet, that's fine. And I'll just make the scope box here up to this point. Up there. And I can even, I can mirror this, I can copy this, I can do whatever I want. So I'm gonna mirror this, just like that and move this over and I'm gonna make sure there's some overlap here in the center that's that's important to be aware of and to do so I will push that there I'm gonna rename this one to area B and because I had it called area A and copied it it called it area B for me so that's great I've got these two scope boxes set up and if I go to 3d you can see them right there there's both of them that's exactly what I want. You can make them as high as you want or whatever. The idea is that the scope boxes cover all the content that you want to see. In this case, it doesn't necessarily matter because I have only one level of, of elements that go up to level two. So that's fine. It doesn't need to be perfect. It's working just like that. So if I go back to my level one view, I can see everything I need to see there. Perfect. So what do I need to do now? Well, let's actually duplicate these as a dependent. So I've got this view with this scope box. So let's duplicate these as dependent. And so what is that going to do? Well, right now it does nothing until I change the crop region. And so let's change this crop region now. I can change the crop region and push it and pull it between these two scope boxes and I can get what I want. Well, while I can do that, that's essentially defeating the purpose of a scope box. So why would I want to use that? Well. I actually don't in this case. I just showed in a previous video that you can use these different dependents as I showed in the previous video that you can push and pull these crop regions if you want, but now that we're introducing scope boxes into this workflow, I wouldn't do that at all. I would leave it up to the scope boxes because that's exactly what they're for. They are meant to determine crop regions of views. So let's make another duplicate of this view as a dependent. I'm going to call this one area A, do level one, area A, and then again level one, area B. So there we go. That makes perfect sense. So what do I want to do now? Well, let's go into the area A. And now let's apply the scope box. This is where things start to get fun because it's taking care of everything for us. I come down here, I can see the extents of everything. We've got the crop regions on, whatever. That doesn't matter right now. But I can go to scope box and change that from none to area A. And we get everything in that scope box for area A. And I can go now to area B. And I can do the same thing and apply scope box area B. So now I have everything that I need on these two dependent views split up to where I can see each side. So now let's go to our different sheets and I'll put area A on the first sheet and I'll put area B on the second sheet. And if you expand these sheets, you can see that I have each one of those views, level one area A on 101 and area B 
on 102. Again, now we'll, all we need to do is work from level one. If I want to update anything on these floor plans, I can do that on level one and it'll show up on both sides. So we haven't even talked about match lines, but this is where match lines come into play right now. What is a match line, really? So if I click on match line, it's, it's basically just drawing a line. I don't have any different line types. It's based on one single type that is it's not even a line type itself. It's just you're gonna, you have basic overrides, but you, it's not like a line. It's only drawn as a line. So I can pick a line or draw my own line. I can choose a chain or an offset like I do normally have those, those options for drawing lines in general. But I've got a top constraint and a bottom constraint. Now, I wouldn't necessarily worry about this, especially if you just have one split in your building. The reason you might worry about this is if you have like a stacking, stair stacking building where you need to split in different places and different levels and it gets kind of confusing. That's where you use these different constraints. I would try to avoid using those just because it can be kind of crazy to manage match lines in 3D as well as scope boxes and everything else. But you might have to do that. But for the sake of this video, I'm not doing that. So I just need to draw my match line at this point, and we can further see what it does in just a second. So the match line, I need to draw, and where do I draw that? Well, I want to split these this view down the middle, and it, again, it's not this match line is not actually going to split or change anything. It's just going to be there, and you'll see that in just a second. But where do I want to put it? I actually want to put it between these two scope boxes that I have overlapping. And now, why do I want to do that? And why did I overlap the scope boxes? Well. If I match these scope boxes up perfectly to end up like face to face to one another, then I wouldn't have any context on the other side of the scope box in the view. And you want that just to see that there's stuff, there's like you have elements beyond. It's not just like a cut off floor plan. And so you kind of want to overlap what you're seeing in this case so you can apply the match line and make things look a little cleaner. So now all I need to do is draw this match line in between. And it doesn't necessarily matter where, but just somewhere in between. I don't necessarily want it over that wall, so I'll move it right over here. And I'll hit the green checkbox, and there it is. There's my match line. It's, it's simple. It's a dashed, bold line, and it's a match line. That's all it is. I can, I can edit the sketch and do the same thing, but like, what is that? Well, because I'm in my level one view, and because I'm on this view and affecting this view, I'll now be able to see this match line in both area A and B because I have the overlaps of. Now if I go to my sheets in area A, I can see that I see my match line over here. Perfect. It's basically just there to say, hey, there, there is content on the other side to be aware of. And if I go likewise to 102, area B, I can see if I, on the left side, I've got my match line that shows up. Great. And again, it's 3D. You're not necessarily going to see it in 3D. If I go to 3D, you're not going to see that match line. You'll only see the scope boxes. But the fact that it's we set it as unlimited means I'm going to see that in any view that I have. If I go to level two, I don't have any content on level two, but because of the, the grayed out, I can see that underlay of level one, but the match line shows up perfectly. And this will show up anywhere because I have the constraint set to unlimited. It's just the way it is. And typically that's fine. I've never had a problem with having to mess with that because I don't, haven't had any kind of weird stacked buildings. At this point, really what is left to do and what, is, what are we using the match line for? Well, again, we're only using the match line to indicate that there is content on the other side. But what do we want to do with this match line? Well, we want to actually integrate view references. And so now if I go to go into this view, and again, I'm in level one, I'm in level one area A, and I'm in level one area B all at the same time because they're all kind of linked together. So if I go to view reference, this is where match line really comes into play and actually things start to make more sense. If I go to view reference, what is a view reference? I know we're covering a lot in this video, but what is a view reference? A view reference is just allowing the user to, because it will be maybe ultimately printed as a PDF, probably as an interactive PDF, these view references will allow you to jump to that view. You can probably double click them in whatever kind of uh, PDF viewer you're working with. And because it's interactive and the viewer references are interactive, they, they will take you to a view. 
So the view reference itself is targeting a specific view to show up just as text on another view to direct you to that different view. So I know that might sound confusing and kind of ridiculous right now, but let me show you how it works and it'll make more sense. So when I go to view reference, I've got some options up here. I need to, I need to determine the view type. And so what am I trying to reference to when it comes to this floor plan? Well, I've split a floor plan in half. So in this case, I need to reference, or I want to reference a floor plan view. And then I've got a selection of all my floor plan views as target views. So I, I'm in area A, the left side. And so I want to refer to the, the left, to the right side, area B. And so when I do that, because I have area B on the sheet, you can see that it's showing up as that detail. It's one on A102. And if I go to 102, I can see that this detail for area B is in fact one right there. And so why, again, why do we want to do this? Well, what we want to do is I typically end up rotating this 90 degrees in this case. I'll rotate this 90 degrees and I will place this on either side of the match line. So let's place that right there. And then I'll go ahead and copy this and move this down to the bottom. And so what is this saying really? I'll go ahead and turn the crop region off. And so what is this saying? Well, this is saying that my view is split in half and because I have a match line, I have more content on the other side. I have th this plan continues on. That's why you'd have a match line. And so again, you want to put the references because that's further indicating it, that there is more content, but it's also now directing them to that content, like what's on the other side. Well, this in fact is what's on the other side. And so just like in an interactive PDF, I can double click this view reference and it will take me to this exact view. I'm in the view itself, not necessarily the view on the sheet. So let's go to the sheet. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, except I'm gonna put this at area A, so I'll go to floor plan, and I want to refer to area A. Right there, and because area A is on a sheet, I have that choice right there. I'll put this 90 degrees and I'll place it on this side of the match line because my content is on that side of the match line. And then I will copy this up. And now we've got this nice clean look with references. We've got the floor plan split in half. Everything's clean. You've got these view references directing you to either side. I can double click this now and then go back to the other side. It's, it's really seamless and helpful to place all of this. And honestly, the earlier you can do this in a project, the better because it's, just, it's always set up. You can apply these views with, with scope boxes. They're really simple. And the nice part about that too is maybe your building gets longer. If I go to this overall level one and maybe my, my building itself gets a lot longer and this match line and these things need to move. Well, because those views are already set to the scope boxes, as I move the scope box, if now I go to level one, or area A, you can see that it affected the view perfectly without me having to do anything but change the scope box. It's that simple. So I'm going to undo that just for clarity's sake, but that's what you can do. It's, it's very simple and it's something I like to use a lot if I have to split buildings. The final thing you'll need to be aware of with scope boxes and applying scope boxes to views is the annotation crop. So there might be, let, let's go ahead and go to level one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have some text. I'm going to put some text over here. And I'm going to call this, this is some text. Now, why am I doing this? Well, I want to see this on both sides, but maybe it only really applies to this side. So let's go, let's go ahead and put it on this side, center it up. We've got our text on this side. Now, if I go to area A, I don't see the text. If I go to area B, I do see the text. That's perfect. Now what happens when I move this, maybe I want this to be in the center of the room. If I go to level one and I place this in the center, really more between them, what I can do now is go to area B and I don't see that. Like why don't I see that? Well, 
because by default the annotation crop of the view is not necessarily working with the the text itself so the annotation crop is cutting out that text so I need to show my crop region and now when I click the crop region I can see my annotation crop right there and I can pull the annotation crop just for this view remember out to where I can see that text So maybe that's what you want maybe it's not so I typically most of the problems I have with any kind of scope boxing or using annotation crop with scope boxes is I want to use wall tags so if I have a tag I'm just going to start tagging these different walls here. I know they're they're just default tags, but you'll notice that these tags keep showing up. And I'm going to go into the main level one and start tagging random walls everywhere so we can get an idea of what this looks like. So I've tagged these walls. That's great. And if I go to, to area A, I can see now, yeah, I, I see all the tags. That looks good. If I go to area B, because of the annotation crop, like this is not doing me any good. And remember, if I move this tag here, it's gonna move it on the other side and I won't see it over there. So maybe you want to simply hide it over here and copy it and place it again over here. Probably not the best idea because then you're just kind of creating more work for yourself. But in this case, what I would probably do is I would make sure that the annotation crop is pushed basically all the way up against the scope box. And in this case, I'm only going to see everything that applies to this view and everything that falls within this view, all the annotations that fall within this view that apply to this side of the view. That's just something to be aware of. You'll probably get some floating annotations on the outside because there is, by default, some leniency to where the annotation crop sits in comparison to the crop region itself. So that's just something to be aware of. That's going to do it for this mini-series, and in this entire mini-series, what have we done? We've taken scope boxes that are very useful to determining the size and, and shape of particular views and taken a, a long floor plan and split that up because we needed to split it up to fit it on the sheet. We've then duplicated one single view that we could work off of and made dependent views they can each serve as each side of that split floor plan. We only have to work off the one floor plan because everything shows up on each side. That's really great. And we finally integrated the match line to split down the middle what we have split as far as floor plans goes. And we did that just for kind of visual purposes saying, hey, there's more content on this side, but then we've integrated view references next to the match line on either side, referring to the content on each side. So if you missed the scope box video or the duplicate views video, which came out previously and served as a part one and two of this mini series, if you will, please go check those out. I cover those in greater detail than I did in this video. I kind of breeze through those things to put it all together. So please check those out. You'll see links to those in the description below. If you learned something from this video or all the others, please demolish that like button. That really tells me that you have learned something and that you do enjoy these videos. Also subscribe, that really helps me out a lot. Subscribing always helps. I sure hope you enjoyed this video. Hope to see you in the next one and thanks for watching.